Hi everyone, my name is Joshua, and today on the G.com, we're talking in store play, Pro Tour schedules, and Pro Tour. Uh... Andy, are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. Ash, how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing just fine. I was trying to, I was like, I was like, tie in my, like, what we were trying to do on it in here, and I'm uh, like, like, alright, It's been a long time. Long time. Um, mm. It has been a long time. That didn't leave it was a dope beat. Step two. <laughs> so, um, you've been. I uh, have. How was your? How was your? It was worse than others, but uh, I grew a little tired of uh, dealing to rude players, so I turned the tail and headed home, and didn't look back. It's good you did that. Got my losses and just came home. And it was a loss, so. That is fantastic. Uh, I have missed you in a brotherly way. Uh, mm -hmm. I heard that you've gotten some sun to you. What, what, what have you done? I do. I have a king keyblade on this arm, and I have an Oath Keeper keyblade on the And this one just got done about two hours ago. So, uh... If you hit yourself, you kill yourself, right? <laughs> They're pretty sharp. Um, Kingdom Hearts 3, a Toy Story level. This is going to be great. Yeah, I saw that yesterday. Um, I'm probably going to die before Kingdom Hearts comes out in like 2050, but it's it's living. So it looks really good. I, I, I was going to say, I think they said that it's basically 18. So way too fun. But then again, I also mm -hmm. waited like four years for Persona 5 to come out. So, I'd actually forgotten it was coming out, or it, uh, I'd heard an announcement for 2013, and then mm -hmm. it got delayed and was like, oh man, this sucks. <laughs> going to things that, well, they for sure don't affect me, because I am a home-based player. Thanks a lot, Magic the Gathering on. But they might affect some of the listeners out there in the queue. But we're going to talk about in-store play and its evolution. We're also going to talk about the new Pro Tour schedule that came out. And we'll, we'll, we'll end today with a couple of Pro Tour Hour of Devastation bits. So let's get on the in-store play evolution. They are making some changes. Which is, I guess, good, because no one wants to battle for Frostwalkers. No one wants to battle for uh, what Abzan Beastmaster. That was a pro that was an FNM pro promo, right? I believe so. Yeah. People people want to battle Aether Hugs and Brainstorms and Swords to Plowshares, not garbage stuff. And what? Wizards does marketing, sometimes when they pick up their promos, what did well in a future future league doesn't necessarily do well in real life. So they are removing, well, rather they're phasing out promo or uh, foil promo cards that you play and phasing in a different kind of foil promo card 
that being a dot token. Andy, if you were going from a promotional foil card that you could play with to a promotional token, how would you feel about that? I would not be a fan because I would literally go, be going from something I could almost guaranteeingly play with to I might use this token in something. I think that's reasonable for, and, and I believe from what Twitter and Reddit said, that is the thoughts of a lot of people. And if I were still playing Paper Magic, this would be a thing that kind of turned me off to Friday Night Magic because, you know, battling things isn't nearly as cool as battling for a dismember or battling for squadron works. You know, like suddenly to me, I have my Friday nights free. And the more I thought about it, I was like, you know, this this change is bad, but it's not meant for me. Like, there's no good beginning plus best for a new player. No. Like, Friday Night Magic's supposed to be that place, but, I mean, you remember when it, when when we all used to play, me, you, and Will, and Mike Gould, and Paul Hart. It would be yep. us against a bunch of military members, and we would have our Tier 1, Tier 1.5 decks, and the military guys would have, like, Soldier Tribal. Or Humbers. Yeah. And... We were at a huge advantage, and it eventually started to. I mean, you know, we're from a smaller area. We get the 15 to 25 and FNMs every week. But, um, I mean, eventually it got to where we felt bad for playing, right? Yeah, I would, I would say so because for the veterans, we were the ones who had the most experience playing the game. And I remember the last one that necking is bad today. But it just feels like that's how FNMs are for the most part. Like you got Kids coming in at the beginner level, you got some intermediate players that kind of know what they're doing, and then you had guys like us who have played for years and years, and we knew what deck we were playing inside now, 90% of our matchups inside now, and you, you and I have been in this spot where we could be battling against a matchup that's 90-10 underdog for us, and we, in our mindsets, are like, I can just outplay this person because... I have I have the seasonal experience. Yeah, I mean, playing against the the military members, and there's nothing wrong with it. They're all good guys. And no, they're all solid guys. Um, they were fun to play. They didn't take themselves too seriously, but it came to a point where. They were paired against one of us, and they were like, "Well, we're not going to." And that's not what Friday Night Friday Night Magic should be about. And by changing this promo giveaway from cards to tokens, it will maybe allow for players like you and me to go to a Friday Night Magic and realize, "Hey, man, we're not really battling for anything super cool." Why don't we battle something super fun? Like, why don't you play this awful God's Favor's Gift Reanimator deck? And mm -hmm. I'll play some off the wall uh, paradoxical outcome deck. And yeah. you know, we'll just have fun while other players. It, to me, it's more of a. a learning ground now instead mm -hmm. of a competition grounds. I agree. And I think 
what changing tokens or changing the tokens does is it allowed WotC to still have a premier Friday night experience for players that will enable new players to come together with older players and then become more entrenched, which is what I believe the standard <laughs> showdown is becoming. That's going to be yeah. the area for an insta player to have their entrenched battle experience. Um, yeah. The prizes are better than a Friday Night Magic. Uh, I mean, you're not battling for tokens, you're or battling for promo cards. You're actually battling for standard rares and uh, incredibly gorgeous Rebecca Gwai lands. Yes, yeah. love these lands. These these standard these showdown all... lands make me feel incredibly terrible for being housebound. Mm. Like now, another issue with this is what day is standard showdown on time? Like it doesn't say in the announcement that it's set to a certain day. But as magic players, we set out Friday was a definite must play. Saturday it was a PTQ, but I guess now it's a PPQ or an RPTQ. Or Grand Prix or something. How are stores going to be able to take advantage of the standard showdown to increase their in-store Yeah, it, it looks, looks like, like it just, just might be like an addition to like an F and M because I feel like that's when standard. Like I, I don't know if F and and standard showdown tie together. Or they're supposed to be treated as two separate events. They are to be separate events now, I believe, because they tie into the. Uh, store championships. Okay. okay. Now, now if you have, have now if you have days where it's like, hey, we're gonna have two F and M's. One's gonna be a standard showdown for the competitive players, and the basic F and M is gonna be for like the beginners and the intermediate players. So you have like too diverse of a field to play in, but you all, but everybody still has a chance to play for what they want. Right. So yeah, speaking of that. Uh, game day is is R.I.P. and pepperoni. Uh, game day no longer exists. It's moved to. Um, I guess I guess the end of the season. Hmm. Like instead of uh, game day being or game day slash store championship being the weekend after the pro tour, it would yeah. be closer to. The, the weekend before the new set rotates or uh, releases. So uh, you compete for the title of store champion, which mm -hmm. is, I guess, kind of cool. Uh, and you get foil full auto cars that preview the next sets, which, eh. Okay. okay. Not the worst. worst. We've had that before. Remember the uh, the Mirrodin Besiege New Frexia thing? Where, uh, oh, the uh, Pristine the Talisman? Yes. Like, you can, you can get a Pristine Talisman or some other card that it had the offset set symbol. I mean, it kind of reminds me of that. Uh, kind of. I'm not... Super sold on championships. I'm not super sold on getting preview cards that are. I mean, you can't play with them yet. You have to wait. Uh, the Magic Open House is a, another thing they're doing. I don't know what kind of format it is, but it starts in September. Uh, you'll get another foil full on the card. Um, this one's Ixalan. Uh, then there's the leagues doing a participation promo card. So that's maybe where the uh, participation game day promos are going. I don't know what's going on. Like, the changes, I think, are pretty good. But the reception to the Friday Night Magic stuff overshadows the other organized play stuff. Because yeah. now, now basically what I think is 
if you were playing on a Friday Saturday schedule, you can still do that. You can still do your F and M, then drive with your buddies to the PPTQ or the Grand Prix or whatever. But now with standard showdown slash door championships, if there's a Grand Prix within driving distance. Do you go to it, or do you stay at home for your standard showdown? I mean, clearly, you'd go to the Grand Prix. So now you have to find, or the store has to find a third day to run events. Which, I guess, for most hobby stores, shouldn't be that big of a deal. But what if you're mall-based? What if you have a certain curfew that you have to get out of your building by? It makes things harder, and yeah, you're bringing players into the store, but if you're bringing them in now three, four, five times a week, you run the risk of burnouts. Uh, still there. I, I was just looking at, I was reading in the, the, I was reading more of the in-store play stuff, sorry. That's seemed like what makes a difference on. I mean, I open about the open house stuff too. Kind of. Um, like they don't. It doesn't say anymore. That's the. They must. I guess they're just waiting to like get into it more later on in time. But it, it it feels like just from the looks of it, it almost feels like just a league. I we've had those. We basically had those two before. I mean, the leagues are, uh, I mean, they're coming, or they're, they're doing the, the booster 30 card deck, which is a super cool idea. Mm -hmm. uh, the open house, I mean, it just feels like a, a reason to stop by the store, say hi to some mm -hmm. players, maybe maybe catch a quick game. Uh, Moto's telling me something. What are you telling me, Moto? My connection is failing. Like, uh, like, open house almost feels like the arenas that used to happen. Well, I mean, where they gave you some dirtly promo for hanging out and playing. Oh, uh, I mean, we don't really know anything about the house yet. I mean, they just made no. announcements. But arenas, arena was cool too. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll play a couple of those. So we've talked about the, the the play changes. I think we both agree that they they kind of make sense. They're kind of for the better. Uh, and that F and M's not for us, but I think we also both agree that it really messes with schedules and how stores run their things and uh, such. Is there anything else you want to add about the about the in store play changes? Uh, not right now. I think we've covered pretty much everything we wanted okay. to cover. All right. Well, let's move on to the Pro Tour announcement and. 2017 Worlds. Uh, today they dropped the 2018 Pro Tour schedule. Uh, we've got a stop in Bilbao, Bilbao, Biblio, I don't know. We've got a stop in B City, then Richmond, Minneapolis, and Atlanta. Um, we've got some neat formats, and by neat, I mean. Uh, standard and draft for Richmond and Atlanta. Uh, B Town is modern and draft. Love it. And Minneapolis is Team Trios, and that is the uh, the 25th anniversary Pro Tour that's coming on uh, for the Magic World Cup. That's going to be in Barcelona. Uh, the format information is coming out in 2018. So we've got a little bit. Um, so we're, we're going to talk about Team Trios. It is Trios Constructed, which is Standard, Modern, and Legacy. Love it. Um, Pro Tour qualifiers for this are going to be individual tournaments. Ooh. But players who qualify for this round of regional Pro Tour qualifiers by winning their PPTQ can bring two tournament or can bring two teammates to compete with provided they are not ineligible to compete in a regional pro tour qualifier due to already having qualified via other methods. There will also be a 
uh, qualifications through Pro Club status, Pro Tour Team Series, Team Grand Prix, and Sunday PTQs for the Team Grand Prix. Uh, so, I really, really, really like the idea of Team Constructed being the anniversary Pro Tour. Uh, I agree. Of, I like it too. A lot of the pros are bemoaning that it's not limited, but guess what? No one watches limited. No. Um, and while it may make for the better team formats, um, Team Trio is constructed makes for the more entertaining products. And as a promotional event, having that entertaining product is what matters most. So, anything about the 25th anniversary Pro Tour? No, I think I think that would be the one I would love to qualify for, just because it's team constructed. It's one of my it's my second favorite format. What if if you oh. qualified for Minneapolis? What format would you want to play? I would probably want to play Modern Legacy. Modern Legacy, Legacy more than anything. I think Legacy is my favorite format. That is, that is fine. Legacy is a good format. I, of course, would like to be considered as the modern ringer for a modern or for, for the teams tournaments. Um, this is actually giving me a goal to try to get out of the house because this this is no way to live. And having a carrot being being able to play with two friends on the pro tour would be great for me. Like I would love for me to get drugged up and you and Will split driving duties to Minneapolis. <laughs> that would be a blast. That would be the greatest Pro Tour experience I could ever think of, personally. And this is coming from a guy that won $400 playing video poker at Pro Tour New Orleans while finishing next to last, next to next to last place at that same Pro Tour. Um, Will could play standard. You could play modern, or you could play legacy, and I would play modern. And I can promise no other team in the room would would, would have more fun than us. <laughs> uh, anyways, we're moving on to the 2017 World Championships. That is going to happen in Boston in October. And it will be the first time the new set, XLN, will be on the professional stage. It's standard and booster. And the Team Series Championship will also happen in the weekends. Uh, also in Boston. Moving on, we've got the World Magic Cup for 2017. Uh, that is in Nice, France in December with some Ixlan Team Sealed and then some Team Unified Standard, which is just a gross event. I don't like Team Unified Standard. It's just so... It's, yeah. It's weird. I do like this change. That I, I do like this next part here. Uh, Making tweaks, tweaks to the tournament structure. structure. Top 32 teams go to day two. Any team that gets four, four more wins before round seven... And then teams with the best records after the last round of the day. That seems, and then day two being modified double double elimination. That seems good because it was really hard to track what was going on with the pod system that they used to use. Uh, anyways, we've already talked about <laughs> Pro Tour Spaghetti. Yeah, we went day two. <sighs> Did you know, or uh, do you know what the term for a singular strand of spaghetti is? Uh, it's not. I think I thought it was like a hair or something. No, it is a spaghetto. Spaghetti is apparently the plural form of spaghetto. 
That blew my mind. Yep, sure is. It's incredible. I had no idea. Um, so, they go into details about Pro Tour 25th anniversary. Um, they go about how do you qualify, all that stuff. We've already talked about all that stuff. Um, mm -hmm. There's also a special exhibition tournament going along with the Pro Tour. And that's going to award one million dollars in prizes. Magic the Gathering, you finally made it to League of, League of Legends. A one million dollar purse. Uh, of course, there's no details about that until September. Yeah. So, let's just say they do this like, uh, what was that uh, one boxing movie where Bloodsport that had like Jean Claude Van Damme and like he dipped his hands in glass and, and stuff. Sounds right. I think it is Bloodsport. I don't know. Anyways, let's just It say sure is. Sure is Bloodsport. Oh my god. <laughs> this is going to be the Magic the Gathering version of Bloodsport. Uh, apparently there will be battles to the death. Uh, but because we don't know, I say stuff like that until September. And then when it happens, it's going to be like, hey guys, fake news, no battles to the death. Um, they go over the dates and formats for Pro Tour Dominaria, or for the PPTQ and RPTQs. Uh, mm -hmm. So Pro Tour Dominaria is standard sealed with an RPTQ of sealed and booster drafts. For the anniversary, it is standard sealed, then team unified standard. Um, and then for spaghetti, it's standard standard. And then for meatballs, it is modern or sealed, and then modern. They have the fanciest names for these things. I mean, they're just uh, code names. Yeah. Uh, World Championship structures. Uh, I mean, we're not... Who cares about that? We'll watch when it's time to do watching things. Um, so anything to add about the Pro Tour schedule? No. All right, let's wrap this up with a little bit of Hour of, De Hour of Devastation talk. Andy, what do you think the best card in Hour of, De in Hour of Devastation is? Um, ironically, I think it's Hour of Devastation. That card is very, very good. It's one. Of the, I think it's one of the top five cards. One of the top I think five it's the best card in the set. You think it's the best? Huh? You think? I it's think it's the best card. I think it's the most playable card. I think it's the best card in the set. You're wrong. And I'm going to tell you why you're wrong. Because you didn't say Champion of Wits. And Champion that card's in my top five too. Champion of Wits is the best card set by far. Not close. Um, it does everything. Oh, yeah. Filtering through your deck, coming back as a 4 4, drawing four cards, giving, netting you two off that, trading early. Oh. It is an incredible magic card. Mm -hmm. oh, I, I, I won't argue that. In fact, I don't think, I, I think it's so good that if I were to do a number, or a, like a top five, I would start off at Champion of Wits and then drop down to number 10. Because <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think number 2 is even close. 3 <laughs> is too close to how good this card is. You'd have to go all the way down to number 10. <laughs> so the Pro Tour is coming up. Mm -hmm. Um... Mono Red was all over the place in the most recent standard PCQ on MTGO. And Jeskai with a Nicole Bolas won the most recent standard open in Star City Lands. Huh. 
So there's a lot of room for this format to grow. Like, you wouldn't expect a control deck to win week one, because typically that's when aggro decks are... I mean, it's easier to build an aggro deck than it is to build a control deck. Mm -hmm. So I'm expecting for the Pro Tour more control, because there's definitely a, <coughs> a lot of tools there for control decks to flourish. There's viable graveyard hate. There's good color hate in the in in the defeat cycle. Uh, Solemnity is a good hate card. There's just so many answers now, which is great because there hasn't been a lot of answers in previous standard formats, which is why standard mm -hmm. was incredibly bad for the past oh nine months. Um, and I think Watsi has learned a very valuable lesson that, yeah, sometimes players don't like getting their really cool card answered easily, but there's got to be, within reason, answers in the formats. Or we'll just have repeats of this ban heavy form or stand. Mm -hmm. So, I don't really have any predictions about what's going to happen at our 4 hour devastation because I've spent all of my free time casting, um, I've not been casting God Pharaoh's Gift. I have been casting the, uh, the card that goes and searches for it. Gates of the Afterlife? Yes, I've been casting that. Yeah, I had picked that card a couple nights ago because I got picked one and got there as gift. I was like, I know how good this card is limited. It's probably, I think it's the best card in limited, period. I wouldn't go that, I haven't actually played any Hour of Station Limited. I don't oh. think I've actually played any Amonkhet Limited. I just don't care. Yeah. The, the whole, and, and I'll tell you why I don't care, off on a tangent real quick, is... I want my Magic Online experience to mirror paper as closely as possible. And while leagues don't really match a constructed player's experience at a store, the the challenge do. So I still have a a mirror for constructed events online. I don't have that mirror for limited events. I hate cross pod play. Uh, I do too. Like you play a different you play a different limited format than what you play in store, so that's why I haven't really been out of limited online. Um, I'm sure Watsy is crying themselves asleep on stacks and stacks of money, but it is what it is. Um, so yeah, I don't really have any predictions yet. We can talk about predictions next week. Um, in our next show. Andy, is there anything that you want to add? Uh, I think I've got everything I want to say out right now, so. Well, sir, it has been a pleasure talking to you. As always. So, for Andrew and LegitimTG.com, I am Joshua Player. Thanks for hanging out with us on the site, and we'll see you next time.